Hi, I'm Justin, and welcome to the Golden Shakespeare Podcast, the podcast where we talk about movies. Today on the podcast is... Patrick. And Samuel. Samuel and, and Justin. And Patrick. And Patrick and, and Samuel. Samuel. Uh, today's movie was um, Jaws. Also known as Les Dents de la Mer, which translates to Sea Teeth. <laughs> In French. In French. Yeah. For our French audience yeah. that is listening. Um, we are truly bilingual. <laughs> in a very are... Canadian way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is Patrick's favorite movie, as he said on the first one. Well, and uh, You could tell when I, we were watching. Yeah, right? he was pretty much... I wasn't watching the movie. I was actually watching Patrick. He was doing... Uh, the whole movie. He was movie. performing <laughs> the movie out for us as we watched it. <laughs> that Kidner scene takes a lot out of me. <laughs> it was almost as entertaining as the actual movie. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Almost. Yeah. Uh, beca- because... Um, you can't top it. You can't top it. No, you, you, like, you must bottom it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, Patrick, why don't you start us off with telling what Jaws is about? Because that's usually how we start these things off. All right. You want to read the back of it? No, I'm gonna give. It, I'm gonna give my own in my own words. Um, so Jaws is about a waspy East Coast town called Amity, uh, where it's got a brand new chief police Brody who comes in from New York who's afraid of the ocean and uh, his first summer working in Amity as a police chief uh, some people start getting chewed up and eaten up in the, at the beach and uh, there's a big ass shark killing people and it's totally out of control and uh, the locals the uh, the island lives on the summer dollars for um, tourism, so the, the thing has to be solved. They bring in Richard Dreyfus, Matt Hooper, who is an oceanographic um, researcher, to come and help advise them on the shark. And uh, after they can't solve the problem that way, they uh, recruit the help of Robert Shaw, who plays a salty old fisherman named Quint, who's a shark hunter. And uh, they go out on a, a mad adventure to go and hunt the shark and restore peace to Amity. Yeah. 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 You got that pretty good. Yeah. Um, as we said in the first uh, podcast, because as like, this is Patrick's favorite movie, but Jaws is also one of those movies that to me is like a must see. It's on the lines of oxygen and how being essential it is, especially yeah. for people who like movies. Yeah. Because Jaws is like the movie, right? It's one of those movies. that's like, have you seen this or this? And Jaws is yeah. on that list. Yeah, because it was such a game changer. It was a game yeah. changer. It, it was, was the first summer blockbuster. And the blockbuster apparently came from the term of the fact that people were lining up around mm. the blocks for Jaws. Hence the term blockbuster. I always thought it was because Jaws ate blocks. He ate blocks? Yeah. <laughs> well, in the second one, he eats helicopters. <laughs> how does he eat a fucking helicopter? He eats a helicopter. Yeah. I've never the seen... The whole thing, he swallows it. So how many are there after the first There's one? There's four. Uh, four? In Jaws. Four. Jaws 2. Jaws 3D. Jaws the Revenge because four is too many numbers so and they, they get better sometimes. as they go too. they get better as like they go like wine kind of like, like Alien <laughs> Like, uh, of course, I love, like talking, aliens, like as well. Alien, it gets better. Uh, of each course, one. for what you're saying is the the first one is already the best. It doesn't get better from the first one. It's not like I'm missing out by <laughs> skipping on those three, right? I don't know. There's some great thematic elements in four, and and four has Michael Caine. So Michael yeah. Caine. Uh, yeah, I, uh, there's an interview apparently where he says he did that one just for the money, right? Was, yeah, I've never seen the quote is I've never <laughs> seen the movie, but the house that it paid for is quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. So he eats a, how does he eat a helicopter? Like, um, does he jump out of the water? No, no, the helicopter fools. They land on the yeah. water. It's an aquatic, <laughs> it's an aquatic <laughs> well, a helicopter with pontoons. And the kids are like stranded in the ocean. The crux of the third act is you have to be stranded in the ocean for the third act of a Jaws movie. Yes, yeah. And so the kids are all, they've got this like, they've tied all their boats together because they're all like half sunk and stuff. And they make a big pontoon. And this Coast Guard helicopter comes to save them. And he's like, I'm going to toss you a rope, kids. And I'm going to tow you in. And then Jaws oh, yeah. like, this looks tasty. And he grabs the helicopter. <laughs> And he, he sports a pretty sweet uh, scar. Oh, he's he's, he's got, like got a, half a scar. So is it the same? No, it's, no, no. It's that, that shark that is very up. dead. I know, but the thing it's is... It's not Bride of Chucky. They didn't but, stitch him back together. But the thing is, like, just from all the other things I heard, like, where it follows the helicopter. Yeah. And, like... <laughs> The it plane. Just, like, it yeah, follows the plane the to the plane. Bahamas. It's just it's one of those things where four. I feel like they could have brought that one back and everyone would have been like, yeah, you know, he just yeah. he's like some sort of Frankenstein's monster. No, in the Jaws universe, there are just uh, an abundance of freakishly large sharks. Are they related? Like, is it like a blood? I think in the fourth one, you're supposed to assume they are. They're it's family. It's really weird because it's like, they, they're like, it knows that we... 
killed it. It knows that we killed it. And it's like, what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> yeah, there's like, so th- was the shark like sitting at the sidelines the whole time watching it? Like yeah. Jason my... watching his mom getting killed? You killed my brother. The 13th? Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it makes no sense. And that's why it's called the revenge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about family grudges. It's like the Brody family grudge against sharks. Because like, oh yeah, the, Mrs. Mrs. Remember Brody is like, the sharks killed my husband. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, sure, it didn't actually kill him, but the fear of it always coming back killed him. Oh and my it's like, god. So yeah. Well, and, and it kills one of the sons. Yeah. At the start of the movie. Yeah. He's the new police chief uh, and bites down. his arm off. And, well, yeah. and then pulls him in. It's very depressing. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it depressing? Or is well, it yeah, because they're singing Christmas hymns. And yeah. he's like out in the, in the bay. All no one can hear him because they're singing Christmas hymns. You never want someone to die when a Christmas hymn is no. being sung. No, that's why I hate Black Christmas. The contrast between the lovely voices and the pure death. So you're telling me Jaws 4 is good enough it's to have artier. juxtaposition. It's artier. You know, this one was garbage. It didn't have any juxtaposition. There was no thematic... Like, no. There was no <laughs> themes or metaphors. There was, in there was no life to it. Yeah. It was just, it was just three men on a, a boat. Shark. It's oh, boring. boring. Now, Patrick, would you like to defend Jaws at all? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to defend Jaws. <laughs> it, it stands on its own flippers. Uh, we've heard what Patrick uh... likes... <laughs> <laughs> That's the one with Elijah Wood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we heard Patrick uh, talk about it. What do you like about Jaws, Sam? Um, I I think what I I like about it is that it was such a game changer, and and it's it's so it it's the the actors in it are are so um, engrossing. Yes, you know, you get so into the characters, even like in and it, some of it, so much of it, it's such a. The whole the idea of the movie is pretty outlandish, but it's so based in reality no, that it it's so sense. good. Yeah. Like even the, the one of my favorite little scenes is uh, uh, like Richard Dreyfus is so good in it. But the one scene where he's with the mayor and Brody, and he says, "Now look at that sign when when the graffiti's on it." And he's like, "It is graffiti, but there is some truth to that." And then the guy's just like, "You'd like to prove that, you know? Get, get, get your the, name into the National name. Geographic." And then he walks away, and then him and Brody just have that moment where they look at each other, and then he just starts laughing like. I love his character so much because he's the he's so above like he's so above all these other like dumb people in the movie that yeah uh, yeah it's just and the performances of the three leads are yeah. some of the best performances yeah. I've like, ever yeah. as far as I'm concerned um like, I, even like sorry the the scene uh, like the big famous scene where they're drinking and, yeah um I just like how like Brody's much more of a quiet person mm-hmm. even in that like he doesn't share yeah. any like he even looks at a scar he but he has, doesn't tell the story he doesn't say yeah. it and yeah he's, it, it says a lot without doing much yeah one thing I do I do yeah. want to talk about in detail all three characters mm-hmm. because to me they're the biggest thing yeah um, for me what I like Jaws about so much is when I was a kid it was one of the two movies that I considered to be my cultural awakening like yeah. if you want to be all like snobby about it because my dad told me there's good movies out there and as a kid I was watching just like the Shock. movies that I had, right? Rugrats. And Rug- <laughs> Tommy Dill Pickles. Pickles. Yes. Tommy. Tommy Dill for life. Don't Pickles. fucking even start with me, motherfucker. <laughs> in the show, um, that's when the show jumped the shark. It did. Yeah. <laughs> was Dill a shark jumping? Of course. As soon as you introduce another child or a baby, that's usually when a show falls off the edge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Babies, weddings, babies and weddings are death sentences. It would have been children. jumping the shark if there was a case of SIDS. SIDS? Mmm. I love how clever we are using the term jump in the shark. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there was two movies. Um, the Exorcist was the first movie I yeah. saw as a kid that made me open my eyes to what else was out there. And Jaws was the second one. It was when the movie, when I saw it the first time, I realized, even as like a fucking 12-year-old, how yeah. good it was. That's a good point. Like, I saw I've, I've, I saw both films when I was very young. Like, Jaws, I saw first, I know, because it, it made an impression on me. It became my favorite because I saw it first. And, and there's a lot to that. But um, I saw The Exorcist around the same time as well. Jaws is more accessible than The Exorcist. So, like, there's a lot of adult stuff in The Exorcist yes. that you don't like. When you're like, fuck me, fuck uh, me. Yeah. That was the one. And like, you don't get it when you're a kid. My, yeah. I remember that was the one my parents, like, introduced me to. Oh. And that, when I was, like, 13, they're like, <laughs> we think you're ready to see this one. And then, yeah, it was, like, a big deal. But but did, was, yeah. but did you get that when you were that young? Like, what, what all was I, going on in those I scenes? I find it more disturbing nowadays. Yes. Because, and... Um, like, it was still pretty, it was, like, intense because I was a kid and I had never seen anything like that. But I think even more today, there's so much more in it that, like, and it's not even just the, like, really, like, the big scenes like the masturbation with the crucifix. It's more, like, the, like, like the way that the devil kind of, like, fucks with people. Well, it's like, like when, it, when it does the different voices and When you're stuff, a kid, you like, see a scary story. When you're adult, you see the conflict of faith. Yeah. Right? You see, like, the, the levels beneath it. Yeah. And with Jaws... 
it's the same struggle throughout. There's mm. really no... It, it's more accessible at all ages mm. yeah. because it has that entertaining story. It's it's universal. It is. <laughs> it's, a universal, <laughs> yeah, it's a universal yeah. picture, actually. Yeah. Um, and, like, the scene when um, Brody's sitting on the beach, the vertigo shot, yeah. that always... It's one of my favorite shots ever. And as a kid, I, I fell in love with it the first time because yeah. I knew what that shot meant. Like, I, like, just all that emotion for the character in that one shot. It's such good cutting, too, because yeah. when, when that moment's happening and he's, like, starting to pay more more intention to the water he does that thing where people cross the frame the and he cuts mouth, in yeah. closer and closer yeah, on him yeah. and then that shot is after so that good. um I, I also have, like uh going back to how this was kind of like a summer blockbuster i think uh like this was obviously the big career starter for spielberg yeah um i think like like what's so impressive about it is that he like a lot of directors at that time um get got their like if you wanted to get your start, you'd make a monster movie, I guess, you know? And this was such a... He got his monster movie, but he did so much more with it that, yes. you, wouldn't, that you never saw at that time. Like, people made... Like, at the time, Roger Corman made his monster movies, you know? They were never, like, th- like this. They never of this quality. And then he... This guy goes and makes it. Kind of killed that genre. It did. It, it really did. It's so much so that I personally don't even like, even though it is a monster movie, I don't feel like Jaws yeah. is a monster movie. It's a yeah. character movie, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it feels like it's above that kind of... Exactly. Not that, to that cheapen label, those That yeah. label, yeah. yeah. It really is, because that label does have a lot of... I love the monster label, right? Yeah. But I, it does it's have a lot a of very, baggage. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You want to talk about the principal cast yes I feel like because they're the biggest hook to me um, we're using so many fucking like terms <laughs> I hate it <laughs> like when we watched the thing we said the thing to describe everything and now everything is about fucking fishing yeah, yeah. alright so let's reel the conversation back to these three characters <laughs> um, Patrick do you wanna yeah like it's kind of that situation where um, you know how in the dark night how people are so fixated on Heath Ledger yes. and his performance that all the other surrounding performances kind of get missed yes. because people are so focused on that one. I feel there's a little bit of that in here with Robert Shaw as Quint because he's my favorite performance in- and he gives the biggest performance, yeah. which isn't to make it sound cheap. Like some, when you say big, you're like always overacting. I don't mean that, but it's like it's a huge character. It's piece. a unique character character you've yeah. seen before yeah yes. he's the, like the saltiest the, old the third f- act when like when they get him on the boat because he's really quiet in like the first but he has that one scene where he scratches yeah. his nails on a uh, yeah. chalkboard another one of my fails like the head the tail the whole damn thing right? yeah then he's gone but then he comes back and I agree he does control the third act but also because his character is so you know he needs to Yeah, it's so cool it's such a character that you don't see often the salty old sea man like, salty old fuck <laughs> yeah so I, I love all three principal actors but um Quint is my favorite. Like, there's this weird sense in the third act, which Quint runs, where there's this unsteady thing where, like, yeah, he's with them and he's hunting the shark, but he's also, like, this kind of odd, like, threat. Like, he'll, you know, smack you upside the head or fuck up mm-hmm. someone or, you know, he smashes the radio because he's like, you know, you're well, threatening my job. I'm going to, I need this money. I don't want the Coast Guard to come rescue us because yeah. I'll be fucked for money. It's even kind of like... um I always get like when every time I watch it, like maybe I'm completely missing the mark, but I get a very Ahab kind of feeling from it yeah. too. That this, it even goes beyond the money. That this, there's something personal involving the and then hunting. Once of, he tells his story, it's yeah, like you oh, see where the yeah. like the that's where the that's where the other two characters I think have like their realization about he's not just in it for the money. Kind of, it actually is like a personal, uh, yeah, um, vindic. Vind- Vindicate uh, Vendetta. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Like if the before they go in the third act at the very the end of Act Two or start of Act Three, you know, they go to his hut and it's just all shark teeth. Like he's mm-hmm. jaws. He's just been killing them. Yeah. Like there's probably a lot to that. Like he got out of the military after the Indianapolis and he started killing sharks. Yeah. I love that one shot. I hope I didn't dream it. I hope I remember correctly. But when they're looking out through the ocean through the front. Uh, uh, window on yeah, his the boat and through the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Love that shot. Yeah, like brilliant. it just fits so perfectly for what they got into and what they're about to yeah. enter, and it works with the character. They're entering Jaws's territory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a good yeah. fucking. Shot. There's there's lots of shots in the movie that um focus just out like out at the ocean, like a character like looking out at the ocean and it's just kind of being ominous. And like there's that one at the very beginning when uh, they find the girl of Chrissy Walker or whatever her name is on the beach. Yeah. And then Chief looks out at the sea. And then after the attack in the pond where Alex, um, not Alex, um, 
Chief Brody's son almost gets killed. Yes. And he looks out. And that's the big get, shot, yeah. like as Sam yeah. was saying, that it's about how he has to... It's like, all right, time to take that yeah, fight out there. Yeah, I need there. to go out there. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to fight I can't on the beaches. keep waiting around here. Yeah. Yeah. Got to go to where he is. Yeah, so um, Robert Shaw, absolutely <clears throat> huge. He, uh, he was having trouble with the IRS when they were shooting this movie, so on his off days when he wasn't... There was, like, there's a technicality about how long you can be in the country before they, like, nab you or something. So on his off days, they had to fly him up to Canada. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, and then <laughs> come down, shoot again, and then fly back up to Canada. Jeez. He didn't live too long after this movie came out, though, yeah. right? Like like two three years or something yeah, yeah, that really sucks he yeah. wasn't that old he i don't know what he died of yeah i haven't actually looked it up but he i know might, he died really quickly after that yeah i think it'd probably have to do something with alcoholism <laughs> i think because there were stories yeah. about like um how he, it's famous how much him and richard dreyfus fought on the set and how much they hated each other yeah um but scheidner always said it was only after he had a drink like if he was sober he was a perfect gentleman and a really professional consummate actor but as soon as he had one drink he turned into a total dickhead crazy and like competitive asshole and yeah really difficult to be with so which works with quint yeah but yeah they probably they probably didn't have to act much uh, no it it lends a lot of chemistry yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. even to this even to this day like um dreyfus will say some kind words about shaw but then he'll always chirp him off at the end of the interview like tell us about shaw is like fucking Robert Shaw <laughs> good actor fucking hate him yeah. <laughs> but Richard Dreyfus hates everyone now yeah yeah. so Richard Dreyfus he's um he's pretty much like the comic relief of the movie yeah. he is yeah definitely his character is like it has the most I guess you could call them jokes as you mm-hmm. know yeah yeah he's he, he lightens the atmosphere in a lot and just of he scenes has, like the scenes where, like when he comes into Brody's house and he's like are you eating that and takes it yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I brought red I wanna let that breathe <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he's got this kind of like I don't want to say he's an energy. He, he, he's, yeah. I don't want to say neurotic. Yeah, what I think is that he he comes into it and he's so excited by what's going on and that it makes you more excited. He really like he, he when he comes in, you're just like oh, you know, you 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 start to get into his energy. Like he's and, a really big source of energy in it, and that works with what you were saying earlier, Patrick. Because you start with Brody, he's very quiet, yeah. calculating type of character. Well, he's the ever so like, He's the audience. In, in the first yeah. little bit of the movie, you're going on the investigation, and then when uh, Richard Dreyfus comes in, you get the um, the excitement of yeah. what Jaws is. Yeah. And then in the third act, when you get into uh, Quint's territory, you're on the hunt for yeah. Jaws. Each character kind of represents the three acts of the movies, and they kind of come in according to those yeah, acts. That's really brilliant. That's fucked up how, yeah. does, how does that work yeah it's kind of it's kind of like escalation you know yeah. it's, it starts off yeah. the, brody becomes overwhelmed calling an expert you know hooper can't handle it let's go to quince now you gotta like like ask like do the guys that like like spielberg and, and who wrote this spielberg spielberg uh, peter and, uh, benchley and peter benchley wrote the gottlieb. gottlieb yeah now Death like did that was that i always wonder about those kind of things like did they intentionally know that like is that a real or is it these guys are just so talented that they're just able to capture that well that that would have been naturally the, by like just that would have been the it. structure of the novel yeah yeah I feel like you know? stuff like that though like just stuff like that can happen naturally like yeah. it's maybe they set out to do it but I feel like the best like the best kind of um, impulses in art come from it's just probably they just felt natural like it felt yeah. right yeah because it's like you can't force emotion or like like it's just I don't know I yeah. feel like it was something natural like that just happened yeah because it's like it's like even when you're writing it's like you have this one character that you start the journey with and then you're like this character can't handle it bring in a new one right mm-hmm. or like change the change the game and with this one they knew they like they had to change the game to get in the characters right yeah. lots of game changing going on this podcast yeah, yeah. yeah. Big game changer yeah this podcast is a game changer hopefully one day. <laughs> um and then and roy scheidner he's um he has the most quiet performance the most restrained performance in the movie except for those moments when he's on the boat spazzing out yeah. like foreground my ass yeah, and doesn't yeah. want to go anywhere near the shark yeah. and, which is the only sensible person in the movie he's like I don't want to be by this giant fucking 25 foot long shark that's yeah. nuts yeah Brody is my favorite character in the movie actually mm-hmm. I just I like the yeah. I like watching him like he's, it's like he's just so he's kind of just observing well it's his story yeah you know? it really then, is yeah. yeah yeah just the whole like when the Jaws comes up and shows him like in the big moment that everyone uh, test to when you see Jaws for the first time but Patrick and Sam point out it's not the first time you no. see Jaws yeah. when he's throwing the slop in and then he says the whole uh, we're going to need a bigger boat. boat that's such a it's just one of my ah. which is which Roy Scheidner ad-libbed on the oh, set oh yeah? yeah that no that wasn't in the script that's fucking yeah, good it's perfect yeah um, yeah yeah so Roy Scheidner is really um, an example of less is more 
but not but not he's not like underacting or anything no. it's just he's very restrained and chief brody is a normal guy in a really <laughs> fantastical situation like yeah. mm-hmm. giant fucking shark and this kind of story this is like this set like the standard for those kind of monster movies you saw there's even to this day like so many copycats of yeah. the person who you know is is saying is telling everyone look we need to close down this because this thing is happening and then the other person saying we can't do that because it's a big event <laughs> the big one is yeah and then and then they then get proved gets right chaos and chaos yeah. yeah like a big one is i don't know if you guys have seen it it's called the relic it come it was out in 1997 and it's like pretty much jaws in a museum <laughs> oh i think i know what yeah. you're talking about yeah, it's yeah, this yeah. big like like is it like mon- mummies or no it's this giant it's... like rel- like monster that it, it's it reminded me of that um that del toro movie what's the one uh, yeah yeah um, the one with the insects that change oh god that mimic mimic mimic, mimic. 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 Yeah. yeah it reminded me of mimic <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah yeah I, I saw that movie on cable i was like this movie's interesting yeah it bites people's heads off and like rips out their brains it's Sweet. really weird it's like the brain bug and all right yeah, I'm you gotta see it one, yeah, yeah. I, I have it i can loan it to you as a side note have, have you seen chronos you've seen oh i haven't that we're gonna watch that for a golden okay, Shakespeare soon. Good. Yeah, because that yeah. one's really good. We'll find out where Guillermo del Toro's birthday is, and we'll watch it on it or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, that little motherfucker, I love him. Yeah, um, great. Yeah. Supporting cast: Murray Hamilton is probably my favorite supporting character. Is the mayor of Amity? Yeah. Yes. He he's so good in the movie. He's like, could you? He's a mayor. Yeah. Like he's so good yeah. in his like lame little boat anchor suit. It's he's wearing it for the city. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those things where it's like, you know, I have to wear this because this is what the people want me to wear. Like that's yeah. what that that outfit speaks to me. It's like I'm wearing this because you know this is the what my city's all about. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He, yeah. He he just like fits it perfectly. Like he seems like I don't want to like I don't want to say he's scummy. Yeah. Oh, he's scummy as fuck. He's, you think he's scummy? I don't want to call him scummy. I like him. I like him too, but that character is scummy as fuck. He's just like, yeah, he has actually like no opinion. He's just doing what he think, like what the general like city kind of wants. It's and, like, oh, we can't do that. And then the beaches are tomorrow is the Fourth of July. Yeah. Patrick informed me that uh, the there's the backstory in the book that it was about the the mob. Was the, taking... mo- the mob was um, taking stuff from the mob was taking whatever cash from the finances or I can't talk yeah. from the swimming profits at the beaches <laughs> how so, convoluted so, yeah well so <laughs> so the the reason the mayor is fighting to keep the beaches open in the book is because the mobs are getting kickbacks and they'll like break his legs away yeah, if he doesn't keep the and okay, he's, they're yeah, probably yeah, he's putting money into the city right yeah. as the yeah. mobs are want to do and I actually no, I did not know that but watching the movie knowing that was in the book you actually can see that kind of like his urgency has a bit something that's kind of unspoken in the movie yeah and um I think it works so well to make him scum because I think he's kind of scummy. So, you, so you're saying that you kind of read into his performance that subtext is, and it works for you. Yes, it works very well. I feel like he was using that. Like I feel like that was the, the kind was of the unspoken that. thing in there. Yeah. And another thing is that when he was um, being interviewed by the, te- the news reporter and just like his whole everything's his, great here, yeah. his sales his pitch, language. So, he cares more about the money than, you know, everything, that, yes. the risk that these people are going through. Some, yeah. some bathers were injured by a large predator. Yeah. 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 yeah it's just like. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, yeah. He's kind of scummy. But I, but I love him. I love him. <laughs> oh, it's a great performance. It's a great performance. Yeah, it's good. And, um, and then he does the same thing again in the second one. <laughs> He does. Yeah. Well, and he fires Brody. He's like, yeah. Brody, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. There's no so sharks. Is anyone in it from the second one? That's he in? is. Roy Scheidner is in it. Okay. Uh, Shaw and Dreyfus are not. So yeah. Scheidner... Well, so I, ho- I hope it, it, it's Quint's like, not in it. And you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't forget about me. And you, just, you could just see that Roy Scheidner is just like paying his dues doing that movie. Like, yeah. he's well, so he, not into it. He was under a He was under a contract. Yeah. To, he was really he had a three-picture deal or something. That sucks. One of them, I think, was Sorcerer, I think. Um, which just got an official video release for the first time in like years. Oh, cool! And it's a William Friedkin movie. I haven't seen it yet, but want oh, to. Oh, nice! Yeah, yes. Yeah, and, so... uh, and then yeah, Jaws two Jaws, was Jaws, the other yeah. one. Um, he got it's... paid a big, big. Stack. Well, yeah, that's why he did. So it. Roy Scheidner's in this one in Jaws two. They uh, they they reference Hooper. They're like, well, where's Hooper? Get Hooper to come and help you. And they're like, he's on the roar. He's doing science. He yeah. can't come. <laughs> it's a roar code name for like some other movie. He probably yeah. agreed to do. <laughs> And uh, obviously, Brody's wife, um, Lorraine Gary, is she's in it. Yeah. Is she in the fourth one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She stars in the fourth one. Okay. She's she's the central character. She she dates Michael Caine. Okay, and I love and and Murray <laughs> Hamilton is in the second one as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. And Dennis Quaid is in the third one. Yes, I'm Michael Caine. He's in the fourth one. <laughs> yes, yes. And Lou Gassett Jr. is in the third one. 
I, I feel like I feel like you guys have given me enough that I can imagine what the movies are, and I never. And have you, don't to see it. Yeah, I don't well, you don't need to watch them. I don't need to. You got to see the. You got to. You got to watch the glass breaking scene. And, yes, I got to yeah, see that yeah. one. Yeah. Was... Are you at all familiar with Jaws two? Yeah, I haven't seen it in years. But, okay, but you know, there's this. There's one death and one shot that I that's really good in Jaws two. It's when like the shark knocks into the raft of boats that are all tied together, yeah. and all the teen, sexy teens go falling into the water. And then they're all like scrambling to get up on the on the boats that are overturned, yeah. and they got slippery hulls. And the little bro, the younger Brody kid gets on top of the boat, and then the girl who's kind of like surrogating him, like yeah. looking after the little kid on the trip, uh, she's trying to get up and onto the boat, and it's coming right up behind her, and he's trying to pull her up, but he can't because he's so little. And the way the shot's structured, it's um, the boats are, you know, way out in the what's not foreground, the background. There we go, yeah. and um, <laughs> and you see the shark come in the foreground and it just like the way that they do it it just like kind of like obliterates her it just totally like encompasses her yeah. just as the divers like pull her under so it just looks like it's just like oh, just cool. eats her and it's, and it's really good it's a really good scene that's the one you see that you see the shark a lot more that was the mantra lot. in making it was show the shark so oh. the exact opposite the exact opposite well because yeah. because yeah. of the the director's rationale and that movie went through two directors well both actually did one spielberg wasn't the original director on jaws uh, the original director who they've never named yeah. I don't think um, came in and they were doing a story meeting and they were like talking about the script and blah 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 and the director was like alright so in this shot when the whale comes out of the water <laughs> and the producers were like this guy doesn't know the difference between a whale and a shark yeah. <laughs> and they fired him on the spot wow. and then they got Spielberg go. yeah, well like, thank god he yeah, didn't but... because Movies were, would be forever changed if that. If they, if that doofus, it was a killer whale. If that like doofus had made it. But uh, there was actually a killer whale movie that came out after this about that. Well, it, I imagine there were called, so many. Oh, oh wasn't it? Um, it's called Orca, and it was Orca. Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah, yeah, it's a De Laurentiis movie. Yeah, yeah it's about tell. a killer whale. Oh my gosh, that sounds. And actually, if you watch Blackfish, there's a part in it where they show a bit of footage from that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's not as good. <laughs> I'm not surprised. And it's also showing the shark more. So the shark gets this really sweet, like Harvey Dent scarring in yeah. one of the opening scenes when it's attacking. Um, yeah. the, woman's, the woman's trying to kill it, so but she tries to, like throw gas on it. It's in water, lady. Um, <laughs> and then she lights it and, and kills herself. Yeah, it blows up the boat with the she's on as the shark's attacking her, but it like burns half its face. So, like yeah, so I'm like too fresh now. And, a coin yeah. for and then so that's when people are like, oh, it was a boating accident. It just blew up. There's no shark problem. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, but it's Fourth of July again. Open up. And, the and then, uh, but one shot that they use frequently in the movie with the dictum show the shark more is they do um uh on the back of the shark shot like oh, they yeah. show the pov from like a camera mount on the back of the shark showing like swimming towards so as opposed to the it's like, point of view of the it's shark like gopro before gopros were, okay yeah yeah so sorry about all the jaws 2 spoilers by the way folks yeah, yeah. yeah. we're gonna go in hard and fast on those ones yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we're trying to save you, you know, the pain of watching these sequels. Yeah. yeah, I would actually if if they brought the second one out on Blu-ray, I'd buy it. Because well, yeah, and then I might you also get, I might like get the a third million one. Blu-rays. Yeah, this so. is true. Yeah. You do have a million. I do. <laughs> I have a wall of movies. Uh, Patrick, you wanted to talk a bit about your seething anger at the fact that they took away the Jaws ride at uh, oh, those Universal assholes. Studios. There has we have to hold some things in reverence yeah. and not like. Di- like clear them out for the newest thing like I get that Harry Potter is popular and it's like a cultural thing for our generation and maybe the one younger before us that Harry po- I get it Harry Potter is a big deal but like it'll it'll never be as big of a deal cinematically as, yeah. Yeah, as Jaws like those movies are are passable yeah. they are I don't like the only one that I ever cared about from a cinematic point of view was Prisoner of Azkaban because that one had a very um, you know, specific and daring artistic look. It was much. It was the darkest film. Who was the all. director of that one again? Alfonso. Kira. Yes, that's a, yeah. It is yeah. that guy. One and two are just like oh god. Yeah. Uh, the only one that I've seen three of them. I have seen no. I've seen four of them. I've seen the first one, and the second one. Do you see seven A or seven B? I saw seven B, <laughs> and I saw um fucking Order of the Phoenix at theaters with my uh, with my ex girlfriend at the time. God that was the worst movie. movie I've ever I seen. I think in my that life. may have been the one I've seen because. It has it the one with the so cat boring. lady, the cat lady, I the cat remember. teacher. No, that, 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 that's at the very end when Ray Finds is in the he's like, yeah. Ministry of Magic <laughs> and he fights Bumblebee. I think I've seen that. <laughs> I but, um, yeah, you know, like going back to the ride getting removed. That's just so sad because you know, at the end of the day, it came to like some stupid suit, and he was just looking at this at a spreadsheet, being like, "Okay, 
the final tally of, no of money we can make with the Jaws ride versus Harry Potter. Well, Harry Potter's going to make us more money. Eh, fuck Jaws. All right. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah, the, and, and that's the unfortunate boils I, down to money. I, it's so sad. It's just it's a sign of the times. You know, yeah. the, the corporations wanting I'm, just the money is the, all that matters at the end of the day. Too bad that Spielberg couldn't save it. Yeah. I'm and, sure if, yeah, he probably would have fought for it. Yeah. You know. And, and uh, um, I think I remember when this happened. Because it happened recently. Yeah, in like the last five years. Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing some kind of like a... Uh, um, uh, what was it called when you try to get signatures? Petition? petition. Yeah, a petition to save it, but it didn't work. There's uh, there's the final voyage of it on YouTube. Yeah, because it's got oh. a big it's got a big cult following. Because Jaws has a huge following. Yeah. Yeah. You would say it's a cult following. But it was too mainstream to say yeah. a cult. It's so big. Yeah. Um, but the ride had a cult following. People who are obsessed with the Jaws ride, and um, they were probably people who started the petition. And yeah. they've got the the last voyage on. That's YouTube. that's nice at least, but it, it was like one of those things. Uh, like, have you got, you've been to Disneyland? Yeah. Have you? Huh? No. No. All right. Well, you've never <laughs> been to the happiest place on earth. You'd yeah. grump it out. Yeah. Um, but like, it's like the Jungle Cruise where like the skippers or the tour guides yeah. are kind of like a large draw of the attraction, and they have like these monologues that they personalize and tell these like really bad puns and stuff, yeah. and it's like a performance on the ride. Yeah. And that was a big part of the Jaws ride, the the skippers and the performance and that. So. It was a little, it was corny, yeah. but it was it was its thing. Can you can you imagine if they could do that with films? Where it's just like we're spending a lot of money to like produce this one movie, but then they could just get rid of all of the aspects of it, like completely. Like they could just like wipe all copies of one Blu-ray and replace it with another. Like, can you just imagine that? Kind of like, like what George Lucas does. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> apparently, yeah, they're they're releasing. It's gonna happen. That People are pretty sure it's gonna happen. Dis what are you talking? About? Okay, they're yeah, going, okay. Like, they're yeah, sorry, guys. Sentences. Yeah, we're sorry. speaking in, through our minds right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, uh, there's a very distinct possibility that Disney's gonna bring out the original theatrical versions of star wars very nice because everyone who isn't financially tied to the lucas film the last like five like you know when it was in control of him knows that there is a way to get it done and it just had to do with egos yeah why it wasn't done and uh mm -hmm. so it makes sense because i know disney really wants to money they that <laughs> okay <laughs> here's why they can benefit from it yeah. they can not only wash the clate sleen with fans and you be said like, clate sleen nah. <laughs> Wash the slate clean. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, and Marker. complete. Yeah. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> and completely like start anew and be like guys like we were respecting it. Yes. But also they they will make a shit ton of money doing it's, it. It's honestly like if they have the ability, yeah, they would be dumb not to. And yeah. if there's like like if this if this little fucking idiot right here in Canada is saying they should do that, yeah. I imagine the studio executives are like. We need to do that. Well, yeah. why not? You yeah. earn tons of nerd cred from the community, yeah. and you make a shit ton of money. So, and I'd probably, I'd probably, I'm not I'd a big it. fan of Star Wars, but I'd buy the. Oh yeah. yeah, it would make me like Star Wars more yeah. again because it would be like, oh yeah. Because one of my <laughs> biggest pet peeves is people going back to and touching finished films. Yeah, like. You but know, do you begrudge like like a situation with Blade Runner where Ridley I Scott don't is completely like, love that because they give you all of them. But I, I, and, I and, and it was done with the utmost respect. Yes, and they were. It's almost like like they didn't. When they had to do certain things, they didn't completely axe the shot and recreate it again. They just like tweaked little things in a subtle. They never threw CGI in your and face. And that's the thing that I don't like when they go back and change completely. Like for example, when Hayden Christensen was added at the end of Return of the Jedi, yeah. I don't like. It's like if that's, someone was just like, shit. I want to go in and ADR this guy's voice, mm -hmm. and it's just like, why? It's like ah, because I can. You yeah. know, like I'm sure there are a lot of people who would argue it's in their right as filmmakers, but it's just a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. I feel like you should finish your work and go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. right? Well, see. So the dictum that I live by with anything that I produce that's artistic in any sort of way, and it's it's kind of, I find it really true to be, art is never finished. You just run out of time. Mm -hmm. So, like, once you sign off on it and you, it's your baby and you ship it off, like, that's that. Yeah. And, like, even if you, like, you it's years later and you have more time, you're like, oh, I can fix that up. It's like, leave it alone. Yeah. It's its own thing now. You know, it's such a it's such a weird thing though because sometimes when it's completely out of the hands of the director, like a big one is well, Blade Runner. I mean, he he didn't have final cut on it. I yeah. feel I feel like directors yeah. going back for final cuts to, if they never get one. Yeah, is and the story behind like why there's so many goddamn versions of Blade Runner is like okay, you understand it if you look into the history more of why there's like is there a is there a David Fincher cut of Alien Three? Um, or he just he doesn't acknowledge it. He has absolutely nothing to do with that movie. He's like they've tried to get him to interview and comment, and he said no so many times. <laughs> they tried again when they did the Blu-rays a couple years ago, and again he said no. But uh, 
there is a really cool um, and, and I think superior cut mm-hmm. that's like another 30 minutes longer and it, there's like subplots in it that got cut out um, and it's not a director's cut but it's like a closer version of what it could have been if cool. he had done it and yeah so it's way it better I've been watching it's such, you, can, you can watch it and you can be like it's not good but you could see potential what he was trying to do and how and it's amazing he pulled that off with that much interference mm-hmm. yeah so and there's actually like one thing I like about director's cuts when the producers had their grubby little hands on it is that <sighs> like we see so much like uh, like the two that are off the top of my head that are apart from Blade Runner that are really good director's cuts are Daredevil and Kingdom of Heaven. I was just gonna say Kingdom like, of Heaven's very really good. good. Yeah, yeah, and like Daredevil. Ridley Scott didn't have final cut on a movie in like two thousand whatever. No, I, I think like it's Ridley not Scott. necessarily final cut. It's just I don't really know the history of that one. It's really long. Yeah, maybe it's cut. one of those things where it's like all right. We have to, it's like, we have this long version, it's too long, yeah. how about this, we release it, and then a few months later, Ridley, you release the thing that we'll call the director cut, yeah, even, even though they're both, you know. Even even The Counselor, his recent one, got, uh, like the, they call it the unrated cut, but it's 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 better. It's way better. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Alright, we were veering away from Jaws, so I feel like we'll do our little uh, Golden Shakespeare nominations oh, yeah. for this. So, uh, do you have a, no, a Golden Shakespeare nomination for Jaws? I do, I do. So, for Jaws... 1975, I am nominating for the Golden Shakespeare for the best blood vomiting scene. Nice. That'll go under best death scene. Yeah. That is a good death scene. Yeah. Sam, do you have one? Or? I do. Uh, I want to nominate it, um, because it was the first one, as uh, the uh, most satisfying quadrilogy of all time. That's actually what I was going to just jokingly nominate. Oh, really? Oh. really? <laughs> Luckily, I have a better one. You've got a backup one. I have a backup one. Uh, okay. I'm going to nominate uh, Jaws for best ensemble cast. Nice. Because I feel like it is such a good ensemble cast. Nice. Uh, and I imagine I'm not gonna we're not gonna dive into it and all say how much we like it. I just assume all three of us are giving it a highly recommendation for people to watch it. Perfect highly. film. Per, yeah, perfect, perfect film. It's one of the few films I'd consider master class, right? Yeah. 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 And it really makes me want to get drunk and go fishing. We should do it one day. Yeah. And we should all just drink beers and get on a boat and show yeah. each what other our wrong? scars. Yeah. <laughs> this, you can see mine uh, right now. <laughs> my cat scratched me here. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one from my hernia operation. I cut my thumb trying to make a mask in theater class. You remember that one, Justin? <laughs> I do. Yeah. That was, it was like he was, uh, uh, we were, I was just talking to him and he was cutting a mask with a fucking exact amount. Styrofoam, yeah. St- and it just went through his thumb. Oh. And I was just like, mid-sentence, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, some of his skin was like oh, falling was out of it, like guts. You can see the fat tissue Yeah, it was pretty, out. it was pretty cool. Oh, I know what the inside of a human hand looks like. Oh. I've got, I, I, it's all yellow. Guys, we're bonding like they Big did. Chinese fella, pour me right over. <laughs> well, who's Quentin? Who's I am, our cast? Okay, I'm going to be Brody. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying I'm Dreyfus? Because you're so bro. I'm, I'm going to say that you're, you're uh, Quint just because you, you scare Quint. me. Sometimes. And you, you're going to be Hooper because you Good. make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't make you laugh? No. Oh. No. <laughs> uh, Sorry. For today's second subject for the Golden Shakespeare podcast, we're going to just talk a bit about this summer's blockbuster movies that are coming out because Jaws was the first blockbuster. We're going to kind of just go through all the notable Expendables movies coming 3. out. Expendables 3 is on the list. I'm not watching. Oh, okay. So the role that was meant for Nick Cage, yeah. okay. he, well, yeah. it went to Kelsey Grammer. So I want to go see it because Kelsey Grammer is in it, but I would have preferred Nick Cage. Oh. I would too. Um, we're going to go through an order of them releasing, just because then okay. uh, people can know kind of what order they're going to be coming out. All right, what do we got? So the first I forgot one is, my sheet. That's okay. You can, yeah, you can uh, thank you. partner up. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow with uh, Tom Cruise and whatever that, Emily Blunt, is that her name? Otherwise known as Groundhog Day with mech suits. Yes, a few, uh, <laughs> science fiction Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one... I'm, I'm, I don't like sci-fi that much. I'm not a big sci-fi fan. How rude. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there's something I, I really like about Tom Cruise in science fiction yeah, movies. He pretty, loves the genre. I hate Oblivion. Yeah, I've never seen it. Sucks. But Minority Report. So oh. good. Yeah, like so he, good. he loves the genre and he and Tom Cruise is one of those actors that That's I always feel Zinu like he puts so good fiction. into his, his fucking scenery. He, he puts so good into his science fiction. Um, he really does. Other than that, loves science fiction. Other than that, I know James is really excited for Edge of Tomorrow. Of course, because it's got mechs. Yeah, I remember him t- when he Facebooked us, telling us about how yeah. excited he was. <laughs> but, <laughs> he uh, started a topic on face- a thread. Like, for as far it looks like a Tom Cruise summer action movie. Yeah, which isn't a bad thing. Like um, the last one I saw was Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol, and that was, that was really good. That yeah, that was, was really, very good. The only thing it was it didn't have a villain. That was, yeah. uh, but it was a very good movie. Brad Bird, right? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I love him. It was great. Yeah. It was a. It was just. It was good. It was a very it was a good. good action movie. Yeah. Very good pacing and lots yeah. of good action set pieces. Yeah. So hopefully this does too. Um, it looks interesting. Mm-hmm. I like Groundhog Day. I'd, yeah. love a, I'd love a Bill Murray. Yeah, I, 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 I would Bill love it if Bill Murray was in it in yeah. the place of Tom what if, Cruise. What if he was that would the... be the best. <laughs> Can you imagine? He should do that. He's yeah. all about doing different roles these days, yeah. so why not do an yeah, as action long as, movie? As long as he doesn't have to leave his house. Like, if you're shooting yeah. in my neighborhood, I'll be in your movie. Yeah. What if, what if, uh, so he's like, Bill Murray, you gotta kill the aliens, and what if every day he's just like, I just wanna eat lasagna and sleep? Uh, <laughs> I just see him, he, he, if he did it, he'd have to be like Peter Vankman, though. He'd have to just do that performance. Yeah. All right. This chick is toast. We need a movie that's kind of like meta, like being John Malkovich, but with Bill Murray. And yeah. every he plays all of his characters that he's ever played throughout the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. Lost in Translation, Bill and Murray shows up, and yeah. Garfield shows he's up. He's all Garfield. depressed. Yeah, and then... Zombieland, Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> What's your one regret? Garfield. Broken, <laughs> broken Flowers, Bill Murray. He's wearing a tracksuit the whole thing. Um, oh, they need um, what Ed, about Ed, Bob? Ed, Ed, Ed Wood, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Bill Murray, Criswell. Yeah. <laughs> what about Bob? Oh, yeah. love that. With Richard Dreyfus. Yeah, with Richard yeah. Dreyfus. It always <laughs> comes back to Richard fucking Dreyfus. He's got a fish around his neck, Bob. <laughs> I love shark. that movie. It's, it's so good. Movie. good. <laughs> um, the other one, next one coming out is 22 Jump Street. Yeah. Have you seen the first one? Yeah. Yes. It's actually pretty funny. Put your tongue in your mouth. Put your tongue in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird scene. That's I love a that scene. scene. Uh, I don't like movie. that. Don't do that. Yeah, don't uh, do that. <laughs> I, I watched, uh, one of my exes really liked the, the actual 21 Jump Street show. Yeah. So I seen I, I saw a bunch of it. And I actually really liked the movie. It was very yeah. funny. It was very smart. I liked it when uh, Johnny Depp and the Spoilers. other guy... I don't give a fuck. It's the, one of the best cameos I've ever seen in my life. I was yeah. so surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, was it was very funny. Uh, the next one I have high hopes for, just because if I feel like it's the same people, I feel like it might be okay. It has a huge opportunity to miss, but I'm hoping that Transformers it doesn't. Transformers 4? Transformers 4. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I go by a very I like There's I don't care robots I don't care what movie. movies people like you know you can like your own movies you can like movies that I don't think are good movies but for some reason I can't yeah. I can't <laughs> get past Transformers like that's yeah. the one thing that's on my list of movies that I just but it's produced by Steven Spielberg Ugh. yeah yeah how hard he has fallen yeah 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 it's got robot dinosaur cavalry. Yeah. James is also very excited for that one, but him and I always butt heads when it comes to Transformers, and we're no we're no uh, so strangers. You, to so that. you've not watched any of them. Okay, I watched Transformers one. Yes, and the movie starts. Did you with, watch the whole thing? Oh no, you just I started with. Sorry, yeah. I at the beginning of time, there was a cube. There was a cube. I turned it off then. Mm-hmm. Why? I was completely sucked out of it. That was the worst opening line I've ever heard in a film. But it's Peter Cullen. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. No, really. I gave, okay, I, I gave him a fair shot. I watched the first one. I even actually have the first one on HD DVD. It's not, I didn't, I, I have HD DVD <laughs> too. I had the Xbox 360 add on HD yep, DVD drive. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But uh, I don't have it on Blu-ray because I, yeah, yeah. You washed your hands of that? Yeah, I did. But uh, it was okay. The first one's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Second one, I saw in theaters. I didn't see the whole thing because it, the theater, the projection. Two behind. hours into the movie, the the next real changes. This is back when they had film, still, and it was upside down. Oh wow! And backwards, so everyone was talking reverse, and the f- screen was flipped upside down. Awesome. And we're like, at first, for the first minute, I thought this was an art- <laughs> I thought this was an artistic decision by Michael Bay. This will get to- the critics to like me. <laughs> Legitimately, I thought they like those fucking French films. Where legitimately, it's I thought that's how that's how badly paced this movie was. That I was thinking, this makes sense. This is this. If I yeah, okay, I'm in. Okay. I, this 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 fall yeah, and then I was then I started to be like, wait, <laughs> this is going on way too long. And then I finally turned to my friend. I was like, is this supposed to happen in the movie? <laughs> So they closed it. They they say gave us our money back, but I haven't seen it since then because it was so fucking bad. When the when the mom like eats a brownie and she acts like she's taken um, Adderall, like thirty pills of Adderall, I'm just like, you know, has anyone on this film set ever smoked weed before? Yeah. Do they know what it does? Um, I checked out that movie when John Turturro said into a military walkie-talkie, uh, "I am underneath the enemy scrotum." Uh, oh my god also also the really brilliant comedic moment when he bends over and he has a oh, thong yeah, I've on heard about that. and I was like 
And he has those little garter socks, right? The ones that like get hiked up yeah. to your calves. I slow clap. I was like, well done. That John was very funny. And the robots that talk like uh, black, black people. people yeah. very black good. people. Very they have funny. teeth and bling. Yeah, that's and they're all inbred. It's highbrow. It's good. Very highbrow dead but man. But <clears throat> you, you should watch... Tra- okay, so Transformers 2 is of such quality that Michael Bay has come out and said that it was a piece of shit. Michael okay. Bay yeah. said it was a piece of shit. Yeah. Transformers 3, though, has John Malkovich in it. I love John oh, Malkovich. John, why? Have you not seen it? Money, oh, money got, man. <laughs> oh, I know. And um, what's um the Coen brothers' John, a wife? Just broke my heart. One of them. Um, the, the actress who was from Fargo. Francis played, McDermott? She's in it. Oh, okay. She's in it as well. She plays like um, a government agent suit who kind of like man. parlays with the Autobots. Poor John Malkovich. But John, but John Malkovich is in it and John Turturro. John Turturro is just cashing in. I wonder if he's going to be in four. Probably. That, probably. The, it's probably easy money. He's everyone's favorite character. No. <laughs> 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 He's so funny. Well, James's favorite character is Optimus Prime. Yeah. But are, are we not excited? Mark Wahlberg's in it? Yeah. Yeah. I just, that one poster that they released of fucking Optimus sitting on top of a, a robotic Tyrannosaurus T-Rex. Rex. So sweet. I, once again, it's one of those things where I'm sure if I didn't have this strange bias towards the series, I'd be like, that's okay. That I can see how that's entertaining. Yeah. But for some reason, I have to just because James loves it so much, I need to be on the opposite side of the spectrum yeah, where I just yeah. blindly hate it. It's just so dumb. Yeah. Like, it's so but dumb. It's, then again, it's not for people for like, because like James, I, guess, I assume yeah. you also grew up with the series. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like one of those things where. Beast Wars specifically. Yeah. The, the Canadian CG But it's one. like, even if I did grow up with it, I still feel like I would hate it. Yeah. It just seems like it's like, like I, he's just... Like, when I go into... I see those movies always opening weekend with James. Yeah. Me and James go together. We go with our girlfriend and our boyfriend and watch these movies. And I can honestly say that I just check my brain out. Yeah. And I just have fun. Like I guess, yeah. I, I go into with the mindset that it's like a WWE feature match. And it's like a total <laughs> bro fest. Yeah. And, and that's how I watch it. Yeah. And like that's the thing where I, like, I was saying that I... I I don't care what movies people like because I have my guilty pleasures. Like, there's this really stupid comedy, Balls of Fury, the ping pong movie. <laughs> I, I love that. that movie for ping some pong, reason. Or as the Chinese say, ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, I love that movie. So, I really have... It's not a good no, movie. It's, no, it's I, I, terrible. I watch, I've got a t-shirt terrible, of it. But it's one of my guilty pleasures. But aren't right? they doing that on purpose? Aren't they purposely I don't know. I don't, very I, bad? Do you think they're trying to be Well, it's, the, um, it's written by the guys who do Reno 911. Yeah, they have yeah. a great book, uh, which is called How to Make Movies for Fun and Profit, but fun is crossed, crossed out. And they basically just say it's like, write shit, because shit will make you money in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, there's two types of directors out there. There are the directors who get on set, and they what they've done is they've made a music video online, and it makes them the Hollywood picks up interest. And then what they do is they get them on set, then the producers do everything, yeah. and then put the director's name on it. And then there's Guillermo del Toro. Those are the two types of directors yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. It's a good book. You should. It's very yeah, funny. Yeah, the, too. Au- the auteurs, and then the they're just yeah guy for hire. Um, but I I'm happy that James has something to look forward to this summer. But I am not interested in it at all. How about I'm, I'm happy Transformers exists just so James can be happy. Yes. I love that. Yeah. He's got nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> um, Finally something. I'm, I'm happy for Transformers 4 because this summer for me, like as we're looking at this, it's a pretty slim pick in year. Like we've, the big movies have already come out. Yeah. The only big one is Guardians of the Galaxy, pretty much. There's only two movies I'm looking forward to this summer. Um, so for me, this summer is the summer of Kelsey Grammer. Yes. Because <laughs> Kelsey Grammer is also in Transformers 4 and I am so excited. I, I love Kelsey And Grammer. I will, to transition to the next one, I am excited for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn, I liked the last apart one. Apart from being a mouthful of a title, Dawn of the Planet of Dawn the, of the, the Apes. Planet. Yeah, that's a um, bad title, isn't it? Yeah, but all the Planet of the Apes movies, like Beneath the Planet of the Rise Apes. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, I love the first one. Uh, yeah. I also have a huge boner for Andy Serkis, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, there's the, the moment in uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes when the apes speak for the first time. In my, there's not many times I've been in a theater where you basically just everyone went silent. Yeah. And that was that moment. And when I watch it back, I still get the feeling yeah. of a, whh- whoa. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm very excited for it. The only thing is I believe it's a different director and different like, yeah, everybody, which is kind of an issue. But um, they're making the apes the forefront, which yeah. is, I feel like, a good choice. Interesting. I just want to do a quick callback about <clears throat> moments that make people shut up because um, we all during the Indianapolis speech in Jaws we all oh, shut yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah. talking through the whole movie, but that scene comes up. You yeah. sh- there's certain scenes when mo- in movies that have so much gravitas yes. that you have it to shut you up. In. Yeah, it's a scene. another one. Another one is in uh, Goodwill Hunting. Robin Williams. It's is, not your fault. Is, 
that, but also in the park on the bench when he tells his story, you're just some kid. Yeah, you, know, and he you don't know like, what the fuck you're talking yeah, about. I, such a great well, moment. Like, yeah, like movies like that that can make us assholes that are just, you know, joking the whole time, just listen. You can't, you you can't just, jump. You, you, you can... know that's a good scene. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, those are important things, and Jaws has a big one of those. Oh, also, it. my dad really wanted me to mention this, because he went to go see Jaws opening night when he, when he was a kid, and uh, the scene when uh, the, the head comes out of the boat, yeah. he said everyone in the theater, like, jumped 10 feet off Awesome. Their, that's their, so... Yeah. That's why I love movies. Yeah. 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 Uh, next is not something that is like I have no interest in. Um, Brett Ratner, um, Hercules oh, Brett Ratner. with uh, the Rock. The only thing I wanted to talk about is James is also very excited for that one. <laughs> he loves the Rock, and I just have to say the Rock and his lo- millions. The Rock looks like a Greek god. Yeah, you know, like he looks like he is on so many roids. Right now. <laughs> no way, he man. is so not natty. It's all hard work. <laughs> He's not natty in any no. way. Uh, that's all I wanted to say about that one. Yeah. I have no. My, I had a cat named Hercules once, so I'm that's, also very excited for it. I wish they, that maybe this movie's about him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's wearing a cat mask. Like he has like the lion. He's got, yeah. maybe that's her, yeah. your cat. That, maybe. Did, did anyone? You, so you guys have seen the trailer for Hercules? Yes. I actually Isn't that a bad trailer? Yeah. I thought it was really is bad. It? Oh, yeah, it's I horrible. No. I'll check it out now. And uh, like to flip things. onto the next one, a good trailer, a really Guardians good trailer. of the Galaxy. I haven't. I don't know anything about this. Are you kidding? You haven't. We're watching this trailer after this is It's the the teaser trailer. Yes. The, 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 the new, Uchaka, the new Uchaka, did you did no. you see the new one? No. It's not as good. No, because they do the they use another funny like out of place mm, song. song. Oh, so they 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 they, sh- they hit it once and they wanted to hit it again, yeah. but they missed the mark. Yeah. yeah, but Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm just excited because um, Benicio del Toro. Oh, nice. Yeah, he plays the villain, right? Yeah, he, he's yeah. the collector. He's one of my favorite actors. When, I love him. One, I love him too. Like, Traffic. Yeah. yeah, doesn't get better than that. Um, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, it's like, it's another Marvel one. Mm-hmm. But it's like a, it's it's almost funny. It's more tongue in cheek, and it's one of the comics that's less well known. But the trailer, because I, I knew nothing about it until I saw the trailer in the theaters. It's the best use of a song in the longest time in the trailer, mm-hmm. and it just it's it feels like it's gonna have this mood to it that you're gonna go in and laugh your fucking ass off the whole time yeah. while watching these people kick ass. It, it's it's a superhero space opera B team comedy. Yeah, action. it's like yeah, yeah. Because they're like the they're the they're like because there's like the Avengers who are like the A team. So it's Guardians. like the other guys. Yeah, it's like yeah. the other guys, <laughs> but from Marvel. Yeah, and, and uh, Vin Diesel plays a tree. Group. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bradley Brad Cooper is a, a, a raccoon. A raccoon. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Chris Pratt is shirtless. Yes, Chris Pratt is hilarious. There's yeah. um. This great blooper from Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, when they're all gathering around and they're talking about good comeback stories, and everyone's like, "Does anyone know any good uh, comeback stories?" Uh, I'm not going to explain the joke here because it won't be nearly as funny. But just search uh, "comeback Parks and Rec comeback blooper" and it's one of the funniest yeah. bloopers I've ever seen. Justin, yeah, if I wanted your comeback, I'd wipe it off your mom's face. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> and it's like that's what the whole thing goes on, and it is. <laughs> Just just continue. He doesn't acknowledge. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a very he's a very funny guy, and I'm excited for him to be a lead. Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I put that on. Is that. this is that coming out this summer? I thought it got delayed until Oblivion. It, it was on IM. It was on IMDb, so I just put it on. The I didn't list. know they were shooting it. I thought yeah. it got delayed because Chris Hunnam dropped out. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Other I, than it's about like some bitch getting whipped. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and all the ladies love that shit. Yeah. But seriously, so this is like they're releasing basically softcore porn. Yes, and that's the thing I wanted to talk about. Where it's just like, it's so funny. I feel like the when the whenever the when if the guy did drop out, whenever they announce the lead actor and lead uh, actress, mm-hmm. I just feel like their significant others are just gonna be sitting at home being like, "Damn it, whelp, <laughs> whelp," because it is all acting, right? But yeah. like that book is basically just porn. It is right? porn, and I don't see how they're gonna make porn a book into. Porn, porn movie. movie, yeah, it's, I'll do it. <laughs> but you have to see to make this into a movie. This porn book into a movie, you have to take all the porn out. I feel like HBO would make a very good Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah, just yeah. because they love porn on HBO. Should have gave it to the Game of Thrones team, yeah, yeah, or um, Spartacus, or yeah. yeah, they love butt sex and all that stuff. <laughs> I assume none of us have uh, gone down the dark rabbit hole that would be reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Right? No, no, my mom read it on the bus. My mom also read. It. I remember I walked in one day and I'm like, Mom, why are you reading that book? And she's like, It's garbage but everyone at work read it so I wanted to see I want to fit in it's like peer pressure the book went viral (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I have no nothing about that there's uh, if you can YouTube uh, Gilbert Gottfried reads a passage of it that sounds great it's really titillating 
<laughs> it just reads it in his life. Because it actually voice. started as um, it was a Twilight fan fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's which apparently has caused a legal snafu about it. Ah, eh, fuck it. And same with that uh, god awful City of Bones. Don't thing those they tried people? To make don't happen. those people have enough money? It's like, no, it's all you always want more money. Uh, I'm sure if they've you know, raped enough money out of other everyone else. It's yeah. like paying people, like we, people paying to go see that. Do shit. we still think that um, the Teen Angst movie is still going to be going forward and trying to be a thing? Because the last couple have failed that uh, divergence. I feel like it's done. I, I, feel, I think feel like we can put so. um, the so. fucking nail in the Teen Angst uh, yeah, coffin. I'm so you. sick of them. No. It's here. You heard it here first, first folks. Hunger, Hunger Games will be like the final word on that. That one is like, last one that one's so like because it's like rides kind of like it's it's still it's. Still teen it's teen angst, but also I it, saw the last it, one. It comes, yeah, it, gets it was people. just like uh, it's just, not as like pouty as uh, Twilight is. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh my god, they have lips. So fucking good. That's all. Like, <laughs> the, I just can't get past that they have lips. Okay, oh, I'm a terrible person. Who's the actor who plays a bank manager in Dark Knight and he's in Heat? Oh. What the fuck is his name? And I, he's in prison Will, break. William Finchner. Finchner yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's in this playing Shredder. And that's w- rad. And that's the one y- thing I, I never knew that, but I like and that. And Will Arnett is playing the cameraman for. Um, oh, the cameraman! I'm like, yeah, yeah. Is that like some sort of villain? So, yeah, the <laughs> cameraman. <laughs> He's just a peeping uh, Tom. Cameraman. <laughs> cameraman. <laughs> so William Finchner and Will Arnett. Really excited for those two. I'm gonna end up seeing this movie, but just for those two actors. I'm probably gonna watch it when it comes out. I'm not gonna go see it in theaters. Yeah. But um, I like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I just don't like that they have lips. It really creeps me out. I feel like I need to go up and kiss them when I see them. How do like, we? Mm. How do we feel yeah. that there's two? Because this is produced by Bay and it looks exactly like a Bay movie. Yeah. yeah. So how do we feel that there's two Michael Bay movies this summer? It's the summer of Bay. <laughs> it's good. Bay days. Bay day. Um, <laughs> I imagine there James are people out there. Him. I'm not going to name names because I feel like I dropped his name enough. Are very happy. Yeah. Uh, next on our list is Expendables Three. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, are you, I, you know, really? He, okay, well, not excited, but I'll go see it. I'm glad they're making a third one. To me, these are like the throwbacks to the '80s uh, canon films yeah. with Chuck Norris and Jean Claude Van Damme, and just like just the the so ridiculously uh, over the top and hokey '80s yes. canon yeah. action. You know, I did. You know, I don't like the first one. No, I didn't like the, the second first one. Is way better. I because sh- I I hated yeah. the first one, but I'll give the second one a shot yeah. if it's better. The second I, one's much better. It's much seen... more. It's like get rid of all that crap of trying to make like a backstory a story. and yeah. like emotional. They, was just all about they the got action. rid of that completely, awesome. and they're all just like, "This is good." That's one thing yeah. I actually like about Stallone is that he <laughs> seems to move forward he, he, when he makes mistakes. He makes he, it and he learns from him. Yeah, yeah, like he did Rocky and Rambo. Yeah. Like, those were that Rambo reboot is so good, so good. I love right? that movie. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's so worth good, a look. Oh, it's man. really you good. Would love it. So have, gory. Have Who are you? Who are you? Have you seen uh, John Claude Van Damme the movie? Yeah, apparently that's really good. I've heard it's very yeah. good too. He does a monologue. He floats above the set, and then he looks in the camera and talks. It's that's great. cool. Yeah, that's cool. he talks about his career. Nice. Yeah, I hear that one's really good. Yeah. Um, don't clap. If you clap, I swear to God, there's a bug in the room. And if Patrick, we got claps, it. He got it. He got, got it. it. I'm like that guy from Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah, you're Mr. Miyagi. Jackie Chan. <laughs> uh, what a Jaden Smith or whatever his name is. He's done now. No more movies, please, Jaden Smith. Oh, man. Please. I saw that after Have you Earth. seen that? That's, uh, I, I watched a... Uh, um, there's a great review on it online by a guy called Your Movie Sucks. I, I watched that review. That's a very good it's review. It's not as bad as like as uh, M. Night Shyamalan's last like 10 movies, yeah. but, but it's still not We should do good. a Golden Shakespeare talking about his career. M. Night. Um, oh, Expendables 3. So Yeah. Okay, so Expendables 2. You weren't annoyed that... the. In the opening sequence, when they're like raiding that place where so and so is being held, it's Mickey Rourke, isn't it? Is being held captive. No, he's not in it. It's Schwarzenegger's being held captive. Oh, okay. Um, that that was some of the worst CG I've ever seen in my life. That like helicopter and the motorcycle hitting the helicopter. Yeah, it was the yeah. worst looking. Yeah. That didn't bother you. It like it looked like a lot slide. There was like Robert Rodriguez level CG, yeah. and then there's Expendables too. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, there's also. Uh, it has the worst, like whoever was responsible for doing like the digital conversion of the film. There's shots in it. If you even if you watch it on Blu-ray, there's shots that look so shitty. Like they ran like a noise reduction filter oh. over it, and it looks like out of focus. Oh, that sucks. Like and there's quick little quick moments in the action shots where it's so like blurry and grainy, and you're like, what the hell? Like that's it's really weird. Yeah. And I want to throw it out there that Chuck Norris 
is so bad in that movie <laughs> that he doesn't even do a convincing Chuck Norris cameo. Yeah. He can't even act like Chuck Norris. He's so wooden. I'm not joking. It's it's awful to He's watch. He's way better in Delta Force. Yeah. yeah. Delta Force is fucking awesome. Go see Delta Force. Okay. It's it's I'm a much more of a fan what of What about what about Operation Dumbo Drop? What's that? That's the one where they have to save the elephant. I've never seen that one. You should see it. They have to save <laughs> I also just want to name drop here and I met Liam Hemsworth. Yeah. He's, oh yeah. Yeah. He's, was he running all funny? Yeah. And he was. He he doesn't have an American accent. No, no he doesn't. He's a liar. He's a liar. <laughs> all actors are liars. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I didn't mean that. I guess and when I when I when I met him and I got a picture with him, I was like, because Amanda goes a friend of ours who's also working on it, goes to get a picture with him. And then I got up and was like, well, I've always wanted a picture with an expendable before. And he just looked at me so pissed off that I said that. And I was like, whatever, fuck you, dude. <laughs> I got my picture. And uh, Kelsey Grammer is an expendable yes. as well. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. He wears a funny fishing hat yeah. on the poster. You would never think Kelsey Grammer. He'd no. be a perfect action hero. It's like, well, I'm excited. I want to see him fuck some people up. Yeah. And yeah. give them some psychiatry. It'd be while great he's like doing if he just like garrot someone. I in really, hope he, I really hope he steps on a rape in the yeah. group. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I watched that episode of The Simpsons today. It's really? my one of my that's oh, my favorite Psycho so Bob episode. So good, so good. Uh, last on the summer blockbusters list is Sin City a Dame to Kill For. Which we've acknowledged. Have you seen any marketing for this movie or any indication is coming? Have you seen a trailer? I saw a still? trailer. You saw a trailer? Um, but just because someone told me there's a trailer <laughs> I did not I've not seen a trailer. It's, yet. Yeah, it's not really getting the, no. advertising yet. The first one I, I loved because it came out yeah. back in like oh, 2000 four, and, yeah, five, two, ages yeah. ago yeah. Um, and I had all the comics I read all the comics mm-hmm. A Dame to Kill For was my favorite book of all the actual comics yeah. so I'm looking forward to that but I just feel like it's I have no more excitement because it was just too long you know Do it was we, 10 years yeah, it was yeah. 04 do we I, know if there's a large percentage of returning cast like is Mickey Rourke Nick Stahl Mickey Rourke I believe is Josh back. Hartnett uh, no is Josh Bruce Hartnett back, was I think I don't know I don't know if they're because his character is only in that one story yeah, yeah. Um, Josh Brolin is playing Clive Owen's character okay. but that's because in the books they're two different faces Oh, because at the end of this, I believe, uh, okay, I'm not going to spoil it, but basically something happens. So they're the same character, but their faces are different for a reason so in it's the a soap story. Opera. No. It's kind of like Face Off. It's kind of like Face Off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but I'm excited just because I like the books, and A Dame to Kill For was the best. I hope book. it lives up to the first one. Yeah. yeah. Because the first one was just. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It was it was it was a good movie. Yeah, and I'm interested. I just have seen zero hype and zero marketing around this movie, mm-hmm. which is a kind of a bad I, scene. It sign is a me. bad sign, but I feel like at the same time, if it ever comes, if I ever just am at Future Shop and I see it, I'm I wouldn't care if I missed it in theaters. I'd be like, I'm gonna pick it up. Yeah, because when the box. first one came out in theaters, it was rated it was rated R. We couldn't go in and see it. Yeah. And I, I was like, just anticipating waiting to see it. Your mom wouldn't take you. No, no, she wouldn't. Oh, my mom took me to go see Freddy got fingered in theaters. Well, rest, rest in peace, Patrick's mom. <laughs> you, you're gonna kill her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's actually funny uh, that the mo- the movies that get there's like only like a few movies that got rated R in Alberta. Mm-hmm. Uh, two of them. Uh, Sin City has a very comic, like cartoon feel to it. The other one is what is that one, rated R? And actually, that's exactly what I want to talk about. Because yeah. there's another movie called Waltz with Bashir, which is also kind of a comic, a cartoon style. And it was rated R. But neither of them are very graphic. Like, Sin City is violent, but it's in a very stylized way. So mm-hmm. it's not as violent as it seems. And I think they, it's given an R rating yeah. because of its cartoony appearance. Yeah, just to clarify, for all of our American audiences out there, to get an R in Canada is a much bigger deal because we have... G, PG, 14A, 18A, then R. R, yeah. R is like an NC-17 almost. Yeah, there's only three Except R's not as restrictive. that I can think of. Sin City, Waltz with Basir, yeah. and Jackass. And it's also different mm. per um, province. province. Because I remember Dawn of the Dead in Ontario was an R rating. Yeah. But we mm. have 18A But here. it was 18 here. Yeah, cool. yeah you can get uh, boobs in our 14A movies, which are equivalent yeah. to your PG-13s. You, you get like a boob in one fuck. Don't you? Yeah. Not like an actual fuck, like a swear. It, it, but then at the same time, you can also get Die Another Day getting 14A, which it's yeah. so it's very strange because yeah. I couldn't get into that when it came out and I was so pissed off. Really? Yeah. Why and, uh, would you want to get Because I'm like that, the biggest kid, Bond fan. Yeah, you ever. didn't know that it was going to be Diamond yeah. Face. I didn't know it was going to be the worst fucking Bond film of all time. Yeah, but. the guy with the expensive acne over uh, there. Uh, yeah, like in the for PG. For PG, you can get one half word as long as it has nothing to do with sex. So you can't boo motherfucker because... We, don't, uh, we, should... don't, we do not want to 
even acknowledge the fact that people enjoy having sex with it's each other. It's the worst. It's you terrible. should watch the movie. This film is not yet rated. I hate it's, breeders. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, God damn! All right, uh, that's it for this podcast. But we'll go on to our weekly recommendations and then talk about what we're seeing next week. Uh, Sam, I'll let you start with your weekly right. recommendation. My weekly recommendation is Drop Dead Fred. I'm just kidding. I would never pick that film. Um, let's see. I had one and I just forgotten. I blanked out. Do you want to go to? Yeah, I'll, Patrick? I'll, okay, I'll go Patrick. back. All right. Uh, my recommendation is the 1993 remake of Tombstone. Starring Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, and Bill Paxton. That's a that's a pretty good cast. Oh, it's such a good cast. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think Kilmer was nominated for an Oscar. I don't know if he won it. I'm pretty sure he was nominated for supporting, though. Uh, it's the best Western I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched all of the, um, uh, the Nameless Man trilogy with Eastwood, so maybe. But as far as of now, Tombstone is my favorite. Kurt Russell. Uh, most beautiful man with a mullet and a mustache you'll ever see. And he's a total badass in that movie. He's... Val Kilmer's a dreamboat. Oh, yeah. And he's very pale and sweaty. Especially nowadays. Yeah. yeah. He's, love... he's, he's playing Mark Twain now. One thing like, I theater. really love yeah. about Val Kilmer's current state is that it's a total, like, everyone's like, Val Kilmer, you've gained so much weight. And he's like, yeah, I fucking know. And then, like, take a bite of a pizza. He's just embraced that he's yeah. got it. Like, you know, he loves he's it. He's actually lost a lot of weight. He, yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah, he got massive, and then people are like, you're really fat now. And he, <laughs> it's just that whole... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, Tombstone, super fun western. Uh, it's based on a true story of Wyatt Earp. Kurt Russell plays Wyatt Earp, and... Uh, um, oh, damn. What's his name? We just said it. Clint Eastwood? No. The one who plays Batman. Eli Wallace. Christian Bale. No, the other one. Val Michael Kilmer. Val Kilmer, you fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I just left you hanging there. Uh, Val Kilmer plays uh, Doc Holliday. Cool. And uh, it's a true story, and uh, it's really good, and you should watch it. It's, it's very one. good. It's very fun. Sam and lots of good gunfights. Yeah, I just remembered. Uh, I forget what year this is. I think 81, something like that. But it's uh, Michael Mann's Thief. Nice. Great yes. film. That is on the Criterion Collection. It is. And I recommend picking up that one because it looks perfect. But uh, it's, a, it's, a great, <laughs> it's a great movie. It's actually um, uh, Thief and Heat have a lot in common. Cool. And I think, uh, I think um, yeah. certain things in Thief are uh, done a lot better, actually, than oh, really? Heat in terms of like character development. Because it's just one guy yeah. and it's really well developed. Because uh, him and De Niro have like a similar kind of thing going on, where um, at any moment they will drop everything in their life and move on. There's, so there's a lot of that kind of uh, um, methodology in, mm-hmm. in in the character, and uh, a, some really really good performance by James Caan. And he plays a uh, a diamond thief who um, he's he kind of works freelance almost, and then uh, but he never uh, works for like a big like organized criminal but then that's like one of his like rules he has like a code of rules oh, that cool. he lives by and he's very strict with them oh he's like Dexter yes and he breaks one <laughs> he breaks one and decides you know I'm gonna do this for this guy and get all this money and then the it, it unwinds from there yeah and it, cool. it, it's really good yeah we're actually gonna Heat is on the schedule to come yeah. up for Golden Shakespeare yeah. in the next mm-hmm. few weeks it, it's, it's got the, the, that great 80s vibe and nice. it's got the Tangerine Dream score which is awesome and definitely check it out I love I love James Con. <clears throat> it's a yeah. shame he's not in more movies. Yeah, but it's also good because then it's like a little chocolate because then every when yeah. you show up. Yeah, oh James Con. Yeah. It's like yeah. oh, James Con. Like, oh, my <laughs> uh, my true, true lies. Uh, my oh, recommendation yeah. for the week is in Bruges by oh. Martin McDonough. Mm-hmm. It stars uh, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson and Ray Fiennes and yeah Ray Fiennes. R- Ralph Ralph <laughs> Ralph Fiennes. Um, it's if you like black comedy, check it out. Uh, Martin McDonough wrote my the one of the few plays that I've actually really loved. Uh, and if you like black comedy, he's it's very good. It's uh, yeah, just in Bruges, one of the. Now, do you good. pronounce it Bruges or do you say Bruges? It's Bruges. Yeah, because I heard someone the other say other day say, uh, "Oh, in Bruges, what a great movie!" I'm like, you idiot. In you, Bruges, you, you pleb. In Bruges, <laughs> you mongoloid. Yeah, <laughs> mongoloid. check it out. It's basically about two uh, hitmen who are uh, forced on one last mission in a place that uh, Colin Farrell does not want to be because in Bruges, in, in just Bruges, in Bruges is a terrible place. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ralph Fiennes has one of the best. Uh, Lines ever. In that I think movie. I know what you're talking one about. You should check out if you really like that. Is the Matador with? Uh, I've actually seen that. Yeah, yeah is that Sam good. Rockwell? 
No. No, it's uh, Greg Kinnear and, and Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. Yeah, really that good. one's really good. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, so good. Um, next week, that's funny on all the Val Kilmer talk, is next week we are watching Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, are we? So uh, we good. are watching that one next Sweet. week. Uh, so uh, check that one out. Uh, who's the director on that one? Uh, Sam, Shane, Shane Black. Black. Shane Black, yeah. yeah, so it was on the tip of my tongue. Um, well, well, He's well. good. It's, yeah, yeah it's, watch Iron Man it's a, 3. It's a really good... Um, <laughs> no, watch Lethal Weapon. <laughs> uh, it's a really good action comedy. So next week we'll be watching Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Um, we have nothing to lead us they out They also on inspired today. a really great song. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, then you're dead in the water. That was great. Who doesn't remember that?